With GPU pricing going insane, here's a look at one of the worst comparisons for a similar budget, but also one of the best upgrades you can make. Today we'll be looking at the Radeon HD 7970 and the NVIDIA GTX 970. While the GTX 970 is two and a half years newer, it is only about $25 more expensive on eBay if you go for the buy it now options. In Fortnite at 1080p high, the HD 7970 performs pretty well, coming in at just under 60 FPS on average and 27 FPS for 1% lows. Not amazing, but still playable. The GTX 970 comes in at almost 90 FPS average though, and with 1% lows of just over 60 FPS, which means it'll be a lot smoother of a gaming experience but it's definitely playable on both cards. Jumping over to Rocket League at 1080p low, the GTX 970 extends its lead, more than doubling the HD 7970's average FPS with 258 compared to 111 for the 7970. While a huge difference, the game is still very playable on the 7970. The margin stays similar for 1% lows and minimum FPS. In older games, the 7970 can even satisfy high refresh rate monitors at 1080p. In Portal 2, the 7970 achieved 167 FPS to the GTX 970's 282. The 1% lows were less favorable, with the 7970 only pulling 36 to the 970's 192. The 7970 does pull a surprise lead in minimum FPS though, with 26 FPS to the 970's 7 minimum. In CSGO at 1080p high, the 7970 achieved 75 FPS average against the GTX 970's 213 FPS. While definitely playable, these frame rates aren't competitive and I'd definitely recommend dropping the resolution or the quality on the 7970 if you're planning on playing online matches and especially if you're planning on playing ranked. Playing Minecraft with high settings, the 7970 ran at a respectable, if unimpressive, 68 FPS and drops to 37 FPS and 1% lows. The GTX 970 pulls a 44 FPS lead with a 112 FPS average and 55 FPS and 1% lows just under that 60 FPS sweet spot. Where the Radeon HD 7970 really starts to fall apart is in more modern games. Some games, such as Forza Horizon 5 and Halo Infinite, wouldn't even launch due to driver issues. Doom Eternal, which did launch, did not fare well with only 22 FPS, which felt unplayable due to the frame pacing, especially for a fast FPS game. This was at 720p low as well. 970 in comparison managed to pull more than triple that while running at 1080p high settings. In F1 2021, the HD 7970 did even worse, only managing 4 FPS on average, while the GTX 970 raced ahead to nearly 100 FPS. Again, this was with the GTX 970 running at 1080p high compared to the HD 7970's 720p low meaning the game didn't even look good while it was running poorly. Overall, the GTX 970 clearly stomps on the HD 7970, but the 7970 still is usable in 2022. At their buy it now prices on eBay, the GTX 970 is the clear option, with the 7970 costing around $175 to the GTX 970's $215. This means that an upgrade from the 7970 to the GTX 970 can cost as little as $40 for double the performance or more in many cases if you sell off your 7970 and buy a GTX 970. The 7970 does have one saving grace though, in that it can be bought for as little as $90 if an auction goes your way, while the GTX 970 can only be found for around $190 at auction. Overall, the GTX 970 is the better card, but the HD 7970 shows its worth and its significantly lower cost while delivering playable frame rates in older games and esports titles. All in all, the 7970 is a 10 year old card that could be perfectly happy in a 10 year old system for them to play Minecraft and games like Fortnite on. The HD 7970 also isn't destined to the landfill after what's left of its gaming performance disappears, unlike with AMD's new 6500 XT due to its support of HD. H264, which will be essential to watch content on smaller sites like Netflix and YouTube in the future. But overall, the 7970 is a card that I would recommend getting if you're only planning on playing esports or older games and you can get it for a good deal. To check out how a slightly more modern AMD GPU fares against the GTX 970, you can click over here to see that comparison. Please like and subscribe. I'll see you next week.